Please note, I did not know that it was a vision until I woke up. In this vision, I was shot several times and died and came out of my body, which I now understand clearly to be the temple of the Lord. I saw my dead body in the ground with gunshot wounds in my chest. Then in a moment, I was transported to an indescribable, inexplicable, pitch black, dark cavern or cave. I'm not sure what or how big inside was, but I was immediately filled with extreme terror. I felt naked, and I was. I asked myself, where am I? A thought then came to my mind, maybe you died and went to hell. I replied to the thought, I can't be in hell, I'm a Christian, I grew up in church. I started to feel ashamed of myself to the point where I could taste the shame, literally. I found out that my senses were tenfold more keener than it had been in my body while on the earth. My mind was fully active and I was thinking of how my mom would never knew where I am and that I had died and went to hell while my Bible was left open on Psalms 46 in my room. I also was well aware of the reason why I was there. At that time in my life, when I had the vision, I was constantly sleeping with a girl outside of marriage. And while in hell, I was very aware that I was there mainly because I thought that that specific sin was not that big of a deal. I thought that only bad people went to hell who committed murder and great sin. I never knew at the time that it was written in the Word of God in Revelation 21 verses 8, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually moral, like I was at the time, witches, idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the lake of fire. I was very hopeless, for I sincerely believed that I had died and went to hell and I knew I couldn't or would never come out because down there is timeless having no sun or moon like on the earth. Just pitch dark nothingness with absolute zero sound and terrifying fear. Then the truth hit me like a plane crash. All those people on the earth are absolutely unaware of this place. They don't really know that if they die without Christ, they will come here. I didn't want anyone to come here. And for the first time in my life, I really hated Satan. Because I understood that he is hard at work deceiving the world to come to this place. I regretted the way I lived my life and I was getting ready to spend eternity in pitch darkness away from God's presence. It was the worst thing that could possibly ever happen to someone. I said in my heart, while in hell, if only I had a second chance at life, I would live it differently and go and tell my friends and brothers about this place so that they would not end up here. After that, an old woman who looked to be at least 600 years old, wearing a very dirty white robe with big patches torn out of it, came right up to me in the dark and told me that I was in hell and I was going to be there forever. When I heard this, I started screaming and freaking out because of the magnitude of trouble that I was in, for I knew that eventually I'd have to stand before God in judgment and then be cast into the lake of fire. I knew that everyone who is now in hell is aware of this horrible future for them. While freaking out, I remembered I closed my eyes and wished that it was all a dream and I would wake up. And so when I opened them, I couldn't believe it. I was looking up at the ceiling in my room, and I was back here on earth. Praise God! What a relief! Now I didn't understand at first why God showed me that terrible vision. So for the first time, I was mad at God, because I thought that He was showing me my future. How I would die and go to hell. I was traumatized and wouldn't sleep for days. But I had later found out that it was because of his great love and his grace towards me why he showed me hell. Beloved brothers and sisters, 
when the Lord had taken me out of hell. It was then that I really came to know him as love and mercy. His unfathomable love for me was revealed because he took me, me, a wicked sinner who deserved it, out of the pit of darkness when many others who committed that same sin as I did was left there for all eternity. I then understood why he went to the cross. I experienced the place where he had literally bought us from. And after that, I started calling him my sweetheart. For no one would or could have done such a thing for me, ever, except the Lord Jesus. From then until now, I grew to love the Lord through the many trials we have been through together in my life and the victories he has given me over the enemy. Yes, indeed, we grew together first as best friend, then like brothers, and now he is my sweetheart, the one who took me out of hell and gave me a second chance at life and a testimony. All glory be unto him. After my experience in hell in 2008, I had two strongholds left in my life that the Lord wanted to deliver me from. I noticed things started working out for me very quickly in the music area. I had hot tracks ready to be delivered and I had found some big connections in the biz. Everything was finished and I was about to get a major endorsement deal when I heard the voice of God in my kitchen clearly. He said, Give all of that to me, son. That will lead you to destruction. And I didn't hesitate, for he had shown it to me many times in dreams and visions, many celebrities on their way to hell. So I obeyed him and took everything that I had spent a lot of time and money on and break them apart and threw them in the garbage can in my kitchen. I remember that for each CD that I broke, I could feel a difference or, or a change in me. I felt I was being liberated from something. Now the biggest and final stronghold in my life was my girlfriend. Little did I know at the time that everything that I did, my inspiration from high school up until now, was my girlfriend. You see, my girlfriend was the center of my life. Everything that I did was for her in some way. So the enemy used her to keep me in bondage to fear. The greatest fear in my life, the fear of losing her. It is written in 1 John 4 verses 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. According to the words of God, our love wasn't perfect. The relationship that I was in with my girlfriend at that time, our love wasn't perfect, according to the words of God. So one day, while I was enjoying a lengthy conversation on the phone with my girlfriend, she stopped in the middle of her conversation and said, I have something I must tell you. And she told me that she has been seeing someone for two years now and she loved him and he asked her to marry him and she said yes, so what do I think? We got into an argue over it and I had to hang up the phone because I was getting sick immediately. As a matter of fact, it was worse. I felt like I was dying slowly. I literally felt like someone reached into my chest and ripped out my heart. It was then that my hopes and dreams, the vain imaginations, the unreality, this life that I myself had created in my own mind crumbled like a house that was built upon the sand. I then went outside and fell on the ground in the dirt. I was finished. I cried like a baby and looked up to God and shouted, Why? Why did you let this happen to me? For I was at the point where I knew without a doubt that he was in total control of everything that happened in my life. So I, know that, I knew that he could, could, he could have prevented it. While there on the ground, I thought to myself, I have lost everything. No one loves me. I have nothing to live for. Then I heard a familiar voice which suggested, 
you can end it all right now. Just kill yourself. Then my best friend said, no. And I asked him, why shouldn't I? It seemed there was a battle going on for me that I was unaware of. The Lord answered and said, I love you. Live for me. And that was all I needed to hear. I knew without question that the Lord had truly loved me, for I had many times proven his love for me. So I surrendered my life completely to him. It is written in 2 Corinthians 5 verses 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, all things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. From then the Holy Spirit of the Lord indwelled me, and I began to grow in the wisdom and knowledge of God. I had an insatiable appetite for his word, and like a young plant, I began to grow and bloom until I started bearing fruits for the kingdom of my father. The change had been so radical that many were not able to accept it, including my friends and family. Most of them think that I'm crazy and I've lost my mind. It usually bothered, it usually bothered me that they think that way because I've lost a lot of friends since the change. But the Lord has said in his word, if the head of the house is called a devil, how much more the members of his household if they call me crazy, they will call you crazy too, for no servant is above his master. Since my conversion in 2008, the Lord had taught me many wonderful and deep mysteries about things now and things to come. It is written in John 3, verses 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You have to die to yourself, your desires, and everything that you grew up believing in this world of sin. For it is through the door of death where you will indeed find life. You must crucify the old man daily so that Christ may live and be seen in you. For you, your flesh, is your greatest enemy, only second to the devil. John 1 verses 12 Yet to all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor human decision, or a husband's will, but children born of God. For flesh gives birth to that which is flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. Such is the mystery and power of the kingdom of God. The Lord dwells in the hearts of men. The kingdom of God is within you. Now, God has raised us up with Christ, and has seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. When Christ, who is my life and my sweetheart, appears, then I also shall appear with him in glory. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. The end.